Hola muchachos, soy el señor Buscaya. Uh, vamos a estudiar los complementos directos e indirectos y los pronombres. Uh, bueno, empezamos con complementos directos. Los complementos directos reciben la acción directamente y pues los complementos indirectos uh, pues uh, son las personas o las cosas que uh, a quien la acción uh, ocurre o para quien la acción ocurre, es decir, for whom or to whom the action occurs. Bueno, uh, complementos directos. I throw the ball. Uh, the ball, la pelota, es el complemento directo. Recibe la acción. Uh, receives the action of being thrown. Eh, el complemento indirecto to Jorge. Jorge is not thrown, but rather the ball is thrown to Jorge. Uh, so therefore, he indirectly receives uh, the consequence of the throwing, but isn't thrown himself. Uh, Juan writes the letter. El complemento directo, the letter. Es lo que Juan escribe. It's what he writes. What does he write? The letter. For whom? Uh, la abuela. See? Uh, they sell the car. Uh, ¿Qué venden? What do they sell? El carro, the car. Complemento directo. To whom? To us. El complemento indirecto. Aquí tenemos uh, los pronombres del complemento directo. Uh, me, te, lo, nos, os, los, las. Tenemos ejemplos aquí. I see her. Yo la veo. Uh, who do I see? I see her. So the la reflects the singular and feminine her. Do you know them? The question is, who do you know? Do you know them? Los reflects the plural and masculine group that is known. Complementos indirectos, los pronombres. Me te le, nos os les. Marcos sends the money to me. What does he send? The money. To whom? To me. Marcos me envía el dinero. Aquí vemos que me es el complemento indirecto y el dinero es el complemento directo. Uh, we have the money is the thing that is sent and to whom it is sent is me, so I am the indirect object, the money being the direct. Marcos sends it to me. Here we've just substituted the direct object with the direct object pronoun. El dinero changes to it. Therefore, it should be reflected with a masculine and singular pronoun. Marcos me lo envía. He doesn't send me. He sends it to me. So I'm the indirect object. They tell the truth to him. Ellos le dicen la verdad. La verdad is the direct object. Y le is to whom it's being sent, which is to him. You could clarify that with a prepositional phrase, a él, at the end. Uh, it's not necessary. And object pronouns with formal commands. Uh, remember formal commands, the ob with formal commands and the affirmative, the object pronouns go at the end. So tell it to me, dígame la, uh, the la is the feminine, it, whatever it is, maybe the truth, la verdad, and me is to me, it's the indirect object. Put it here. Put what here? Put it here. The direct object pronoun, el complemento directo. Y tenemos el complemento directo en la forma de un pronombre, it. So, póngalo aquí. Put it, the lo, it. The direct object pronoun. Um, replacing whatever the masculine thing was. So you notice that both diga and ponga are getting an accent. So that when you add the me la, the stress stays on the second to the last syllable of the original conjugated verb. Diga, ponga, so we need it to stay there. Dígame la, póngalo. Y recuerden, rid, reflexive, direct, indirect. It's the order in which the pronouns will be placed. If you have multiple pronouns, which one do you put first, second, or third? Keep in mind, if there's a reflexive pronoun, that goes first. If there's a direct object pronoun, 
that goes second, and if there's an indirect object pronoun, that goes third. So they'll always be placed in that order if there's multiple pronouns in use. Buena suerte. Nos vemos mañana.